Attention viewer, you are watching the world's biggest Monster Truck Diecast YouTube channel. This is Monster Jam OCD. Well, hello everyone across the world and welcome back to the Monster Truck Collecting Podcast. I am joined once again with Phil and RJ for this discussion of the Muscle Machines line of 2005, the final edition of this 164 skill series, unless Phil, we do a NASCAR one, I'm not sure. Oh, uh, NASCAR's in here tonight as well. Okay, uh, it's going to come right in. Okay, cool. So we're yeah. going to do, uh, they're going to do most of it, um, 2005 and NASCAR in one, of course, using brianzypatton.com. Uh, I'm going to step away for a little while here, uh, so the floor goes to our um, our lovely Muscle Machines knowledgeable people, uh, Phil and RJ, and I'll be back um, in a little while. So, uh, Phil, if you want to go ahead and fire up Brian Z. Patton, and yeah, uh, RJ, yeah. welcome back to the show for the third time in a row. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, RJ's back here with us again. RJ, how you doing here tonight? Good. How y'all doing? Well, I'm doing great. great. Man. I tell you, you know, i got to start with a couple shout-outs here. I saw if you guys caught our... Uh, monster of an episode last week 2005 hot wheels monster james a long one it's a cryptic one but it was a good one i saw in the comments my old buddy mad rat was in there so shout out to holland to you mad rat hope all is well with tiger and the family and also it's my buddy nick's birthday the mountain i have the monster nut he's yeah. here oh, wow. on yes sir YouTube. so happy birthday <laughs> to the mountain if you guys know the mountain you know he's an awesome dude i hope he's doing well so I got the monster nut here. He's going to sit right next to me as we do this podcast here tonight. Uh, this is the end of the Muscle Machines line. Uh, this is 2005. Uh, it was only a three-year run for Muscle Machines. So, uh, you know, they weren't around a long time, but their impact was very much felt for when they were there. But if you caught some of our past episodes, you'll know that I, I have not been singing the praises of this 2005 line. And it, it, this is going to be – a tough one with a lot of uh, a lot of question marks on this entire line, but luckily we have a lot of great after images. So stay tuned to some extracurricular pictures afterwards as we start with the 2005 Muscle Machines line with one of the only real trucks that are in that's in this line. It is the Incredible Hulk. Uh, you can tell by the arms here. Uh, it's a little bit. It's a modification of the Samson that we saw in the previous. Uh, two years from Muscle Machines, uh, but this truck ended up running for a brief period on the real-life Samson truck. Dan Patrick did drive it for a few events. Uh, wasn't around for a very long time, but this is the, this did become a real truck, and it's really cool to see because there was a lot of different Hulk trucks over the years, and I know we've documented uh, a long form on the Hulk truck that was supposed to run for Monster Jam, and then you got the Hulk that runs in Europe, and then there's like Guy Wood had a Hulk, and there was a Hulk in the UK. This was Dan Patrick's Hulk. You can see Samson's right there on the roof, so it's still continuing with the Muscle Machines where it's, um, you know, continuing on with the truck name and then just a different paint scheme. It's all green. It's Hulk green. Uh, cool card art there, really giving the Hulk smash vibe. Uh, it's kind of interesting. You start to line off with probably – one of the winners in the line. What do you think, yeah. Hart? For sure, probably the best truck out of the whole line this year. I mean, out of all the fantasy trucks that we saw last year, and then moving forward into this year, it's it, uh, it's like, hey, we're gonna start probably the best we have, and that's gonna be it from here on out. Yeah, so guys, this is gonna be an interesting one. So if you do have a lot of questions or comments about muscle machines in general, tonight's a good night to ask them because. It's a lot of freestyling here tonight. Uh, if you guys are joining in just now, Ryan hopped off. He's got a, a little bit of a project going on in the background there. He's helping cooking dinner. So for, uh, myself and RJ, we're going to spearhead the discussion here as we continue to power on here in Muscle Machines Land. I see, I do see one comment here uh, talking about you know purchasing the Muscle Machines and why did they go away and when they'll be brought back in, the, in this form or anything. Uh so Muscle Machines was a toy line. They were purchased by Action Collectibles a number of while ago. And I, I don't know why this line ended, but I think Muscle Machines as a whole did continue for a little bit. But this was around the time when 
uh, action was really being consolidated and they were closing a lot of the offices and moving back to Charlotte. Like I know they had a big office out in Chandler, Arizona, where they had a lot of, mm. uh, they had a retail shop there as well. Oh, and they closed everything there. And I think it was a big part of the consolidation with, um, all the different companies that action mm. was under, uh, God, Midland, what was the main, was it Midland toys or so, uh, the guy with the iguana? Well, I'm drawing a blank. It's on the card here. But uh, fun land, fun line, fun, fun yeah, land. yeah. Whatever the parent oh. was here, that got real goofy. So, uh, and well, it, you'll see had one of the one. action trucks. We got a Dale Junior here with us tonight. Yeah, we do it for Dale. So we're okay. gonna keep going Always. here. Always. Uh, quick question: When did they bring Marvel into the line? Uh, really, this year. Um, I guess Marvel just jumped on with the license with. Uh, through Milestone Motorsports. And if you want to hear the background on how Milestone Motorsports is involved with the muscle machines, make sure you go back to the 2003 episode in detail. Uh, mainly, they were just like a brokerage firm that kind of contacted a lot of different companies for licensing on toys. And they got a hold with muscle machines. And that's how we got the Universal Monsters and the Van Helsings uh, mm -hmm. and all the different properties under Universal. But that's how we also got the real trucks in the line as well through that same licensing firm. So uh, a lot of great questions. So make sure if you have a lot of questions here, make sure you keep bringing them up here. Uh, oh, yeah. Better not hear you uh, mention Carpet League. Well, you, maybe not a lot tonight. Cause again, I don't know if a lot of these trucks made it to your Carpet League because it's, <laughs> it's a goofy one. Uh, here's number two in the line here. It's a Spider-Man, uh, a red version. Uh, this should have the branding. I'll be fast forward real quick onto the roof. Yes, it does. It has the branding of Dragon Slayer. Dragon Slayer made its debut in the previous year in 2004 on this obnoxious uh, Hummer body. Yeah. And here is the Spider-Man version. This truck is covered in webs. It is bright red. It is in your face. Oh, yeah. It's a great look. Uh, I think it has a lot of visibility for the branding of Spider-Man. Uh, we'll fast forward to another version of Spider-Man later on that I think is also another breadwinner here. But, RJ, what do you think? Uh, no, I actually uh... – Found out something I didn't know. I didn't know this was a Dragon Slayer all these years. I just thought it was a random Spider-Man. Didn't know that was on the roof. Uh, very interesting uh, all these years later. But, uh, you know, it's very bright. It's definitely stood out. If you saw it on the toy aisle, for sure. And, yeah, there won't be much Carpet League talk tonight because these are a bunch of interesting trucks, needless to say. Yeah, very interesting indeed. Um, uh, well, another comment here. Why does the grill look like a Ford? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I don't think these. Uh, let me double check as I look in the uh, from the Monster mm -hmm. Patrol from prior. I don't know if this was actually licensed through Hummer, which is very interesting because in the history of this line, they did have licenses from Chevrolet, Ford, and right. Dodge. Yeah. But interesting, they didn't get one through Hummer, which very interesting. makes sense knowing that they have Chevrolet. Yeah. And, yeah, no, these were not licensed through Hummer, which could probably be why this body is uh, just very bizarre looking. And we mentioned in the previous episode how, like, in 2003, we get a, a Dragon Slayer Hot Wheels toy, and then right. it looks perfectly fine. And then in 2004, we get a Dragon Slayer Muscle Machines that it, it's just, like, it doesn't match up. So you kind of have this body – you got to use what you work with, and when you guess you don't have the licenses, you have to change a couple things. Yeah, I mean, it's the best you can do for what you got, no doubt. Yeah, so that's number two, Spider-Man. Uh, moving on, number three, uh, this is a very Marvel-heavy line. Kind of like how the first year was Monsters, second mm -hmm. year was Van Helsing, this year is just a bunch of Marvel. Of Marvel. So, And there's some other properties, too, as we get into it. Uh, here's another one. It's the X – excuse me, it's the X-Men. This is a yellow, same with the Hummer body. I believe the branding on this one is just Muscle Machines on the Roof, which yeah. is – there it is. Uh, for those that don't know, there was a real-life Muscle Machines truck that ran uh, uh, through Craig Christensen's team on the Hummer body. So kind of same branding here. Uh, great card art here. Uh, X, I think there might have been an X-Men movie. Uh, they started to kind of pick it up the Chronicles here. I know there's yeah. a Fantastic Four movie around this time, and we'll talk about that in a bit. Or a cartoon, and they had to have something going on to push that out, definitely. Yeah, and I know why we kind of talk about it. Like, look, so I'm not into, like, the superhero movies, so 
Uh, I, I'm not familiar with like the current like cinematic universe and kind of their timelines, but I I know like like this is right like right on the heels of like the the universe really kind of kicking up in the high speed yeah. to where we're all at now and everything's all one big timeline. So yeah. Uh, yeah, here's the X Men truck. It's all yellow here. We got got old boy here with the flame eyes. I don't. <laughs> oh boy. Oh here boy. Here we go. Oh, Phil's exposed again. I don't know all the superheroes, so it's this is gonna get ugly. Um, so uh, yeah, so there's that there. Um, very very interesting that Muscle Machines is on the roof of that. That's uh, another truck I didn't know was actually a real truck, just with a fantasy knockoff paint scheme to it, and that's interesting. Yeah, no, it's another good one here. Uh, here's another uh, another one as we move on to number four. It's a, a Monster Patrol version of the Punisher. Yeah. Uh, this is the gray version of the Punisher. I know there was a Punisher movie that came out in 2004. So this is this all is in the correct timeline. And I know about that Punisher movie because Brendan Gaughan ran a Punisher yes. sponsored car on yes, the 77. You have that. So. Yeah. Uh, here's the Punisher. You know what's kind of interesting? You know, we talk about this as a toy line, and we got old Punisher here. He's got a he's got a gun in his hand, and you look on the truck, and there are guns on the hood. It's just a big contrast. You would definitely not see that today. And um, compared to uh, wise guys and the clowns and the all that fun stuff, just throw a couple guns in there too. Yeah, I mean. Uh, I'm shocked. I mean, the timeline, I guess, just kind of makes sense. Now it is very like, ooh, okay. But uh, this is another one of those adult collectibles that leaned more towards that way. Yeah, no, it's pretty wild to see that. And as, as I know a lot of current fans probably know, um, the Punisher in the current Monster Jam form, there was the Punisher – through the, uh, the Netflix series that did run one event with Tony Oaks in Houston a couple of years back. So uh, that, you know, I know that keeps Punisher in the current lore, but here's one right here. Yeah. Uh, somebody was saying something about the wing. Maybe the, I don't know, the wing <laughs> looks kind of goof on here. It looks kind of fine to me. Maybe it just sits low on this version. Look at, look, at the, look at the back of it. It looks a little bit thicker on the sides. Go to the tailgate shot. Yes. Um... No, oh, you're good. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right here. Yeah, okay. it looks a little thicker in there. That's weird. Is it all the way down on the side to the bed? Yeah, it's kind of like it's like really oh. free fitting. So it looks like a camper top. Yeah, no, it is what it is there. So, uh, you know, another thing to mention here, uh, as why while we're sitting on these card arts, the card art really hits home here. Uh, this, this is if you're a card art guy, this is probably the best year for cards. Uh, that was always one thing about the muscle machines that the card art was always a plus. Yeah, and uh, you know, here's another example of that. Yeah, uh, solid card art, no doubt. They had some stellar over the years. Here's some muscle. Uh, another comment here from uh, our good friend uh, Nathaniel in here. He says, well, "All these fantasy trucks. How well did they move on the pegs? Was there a large following for these?" But they have trouble selling, and that be a contributing factor to line ending. You know, that's a good question, RJ. You know, I don't, I, I wasn't really toy collecting at this time. If, if you get to the next year, then I could give you some good info. Well, what, what were these selling like back in the day? Do you remember? I mean, like I mentioned last week, I didn't see a bunch of this year, um, of these truck lines because I think my local Walmart was either like getting a new store or something. So like. They were taking all the stuff out of the old store to go to the new store, and when they shifted over, they only brought uh, Small Hub, Hot Wheels, Monster Jam, and Big Hubs later on in the year once it was finished. So it was very weird, that, and I never saw any of these, so I, could not, I couldn't vouch for how they sold or how they didn't because I never saw them. Yeah, and if you were in the comments here and you were around when these things were on shelves – let us know what the distribution was like on these because this line is so weird. There's really no real trucks in here, and it is the ending line. There's just a lot going on. So, And we did mention how kind of the, all the companies that were involved putting on muscle machines really consolidating at that time. So uh, that could be another factor. There's a lot of factors on what ifs. I don't know if there's a definitive answer, but if you were collecting at this time and you remember seeing these on shelves, please leave a comment or send us a message and 
maybe help us kind of paint the puzzle, uh, paint the picture, finish the puzzle on what, what happened here at Muscle Machines. Uh, as we move on to number five, it is a Captain America truck. Uh, this one's underneath the Bigfoot tagline. Yep. And uh, this is like just straight. This looks like a Bigfoot. It's all white truck. It has Captain America right there on the side, right in the hood. And um, uh, as we scroll up there, Bigfoot's on the roof. So as continuing with the okay. branding. One thing I am noticing now, RJ, is that there's no Ford licensing on here. So uh, I'm wondering if, you know, that has a contributing factor to it to where we law, uh, we kind of lost the, uh, the licensing here. So yeah. it's starting to look like, you know, some of the trucks are none, almost none of the actually like Hulk is maybe the only real truck. And uh, out of all these trucks, you're starting to notice they're going to more fantasy schemes than real schemes. And that may have something to do with that also. And it may have something to do with that ugly Hummer tool or whatever that is. The front end of it, they lost the GM contract and they just threw that together late in the year previous. Yeah, so in the, yeah, that's a curious thing. If you guys are following along for some of the previous episodes, uh, you would know that all of the Bigfoot trucks have Ford branding and Ford licensing on it, and that we talk about the Dodges and the Chevys. So now we're seeing that licensing isn't present here. Uh, it's just kind of like raising the flag in, in so many ways. It's like we're not going to go out. They still got the Bigfoot license here, but they're slapping it on Captain America. Uh, Jason Twite's in the comments here. Uh, old Midwest Monsters. He says retail price is a regular three ninety nine to five ninety nine range, depending on store. Yeah, so these did sell at the normal price range, but I'd have to imagine these things were just not moving well. Maybe compared to some of the real life trucks, I know the two thousand five Hot Wheels line was just a, such, such a barn burner with fantasy trucks, but yeah. this is such a curious line where it's 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 it's, it's like. You look at this and you understand why the line went away, if you had to guess. Yeah. Uh, here up on screen is number six. It's Daredevil. This is under the Carolina Crusher branding. Uh, once again, there's no Chevy uh, backing here, but yet we got Carolina Crusher supporting. Oh, uh, there's an all red truck. truck. What's look that? At it. Where at? No, just like, like it looks like a Ford to me. Oh yeah, yeah. No, this yeah. So here's Carolina Crush on the roof. Name. This has got to be the same tooling as what we saw with Bigfoot previously, is it yeah. not? It looks like it to me. The side kind of looks different, but once you showed the front, I was kind of like, uh, is that the Ford mold? Uh, mm. Yeah. So it's kind of like we cut costs here with the line. So it's like you know the Carolina Crushers were all sitting on the Chevys and everything. And now we're just kind of all in a universal mold. Yeah. It, it, it just gets really curious. It's like, what happened here where it's like all of a, they just pulled the rug and now it's just Marvel comics here. Uh, these look like the same tools to me. So I, it's very weird. Uh, but yeah, here's daredevil. If you're a daredevil fan, here, here you go. Uh, but, he's, he's an all red truck, but yeah, it's a cool truck. Uh, I've never saw this one before. It, just seeing it now. Uh, I mean, I've looked through the website, of course. Uh, many times, but seeing it again for the first time in a minute. Uh, very uh, nice truck. Wish I would have found it. Uh, minus the body being a Ford and it Carolina Crusher, but eh. nice truck. Yeah, that's uh, it's 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 for what it's worth. Again, if you're a big Marvel fan here, this is such a winner line. As we, now we kind of go back to the cycle. So that was like the first six trucks. Now we're gonna see the same six trucks, but in like repaints, pretty much. So <laughs> here's Incredible Hulk. Number seven in the line, we saw the all green one, which did make an appearance on the on a real truck. Yep. Uh, this one, same design, except this this guy's all yellow. It still <laughs> has the Samson branding on it. Uh, it's the same graphics as the green one. Same old. Get it in all yellow. Looks like it. I didn't mean to cut you off. I was just saying this mold was the same. No, please cut me off because there's not much to say here on some of these repaints. No. Yeah. Uh, there's not. I mean, it was just saying the mold's the same. Yeah, it's the molds are same here. Again, the I, I did find interesting that the arms that they use on the Hulk truck, and I did mention this before, they're not the same arms that they use on the Samson ones. Uh, yeah. Samson ones are completely straightforward, and these ones kind of got a flex on them. So yeah, they bow to it. Yeah, so the, the, there's your, there's another chance to get the Hulk. Not the most tour accurate one, but another good one. Number eight, this is the other winner in the line here. It is the only other – real life truck that does make an appearance in some some capacity i mean there are differences it is spider-man again underneath the dragon slayer banner this one is white 
Uh, this is the same red truck that we saw before. Now, instead of red, it is white. Uh, this ended up running as a real truck, and this this one did yeah. last a lot longer than the Hulk on the Samson. This was a team truck, two Dragon Slayer, for the or whatever for a long or muscle, yeah, for a long time. Spider Man, Paul Jensen drove it for a bit. Uh, probably the most common person you can recognize at this. Craig Christensen also has a lot of documented runs in this truck himself. Uh, this was also a common one on the Monsters of Destruction tour, which is really getting into high speed at this time. Uh, Mm -hmm. Monsters of Destruction all underneath the Milestone Motorsports kind of like booking franchise with a lot of the same people yapping in each other's ears. So a lot of the focus I know went to making that tour possible. And if you watch Monsters of Destruction back in the day, uh, they aired on the Outdoor Channel, yep. uh, like Obsession Ran, uh, the series. The Monster Moves, Public Disturbance. Yeah, Big Monster Moves. Once in a while. Um... You had Dragon Slayer, Spider-Man, this truck. Um, what else did you have? Yeah, uh, there's a lot of good ones. Natural High was on a lot of the events, yeah, too. Man. You can see it on the card here. Uh, yeah, this is just right around the time where Monsters of Destruction really starts to get pushed here. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, this is the only other winner here. So if you're coming in, we've, I know we mentioned it a lot, where if you're only buying trucks that are, like, tour accurate, Your you only got to Monster yeah. Truck League truck right yeah. here. There's only two trucks in this in this main line that you need for the Carpet League. It's that yeah. Green Hulk yeah. and this White Spider Man. So this is this is an easy year for your pocketbook unless you want to pick up some some of the other ones. Yeah, I mean you. That's that's everything I was going to mention about the truck. So spot on on that and uh, very cool nostalgic truck, no doubt. Yep. So there, that's the old Spider Man again. As then we get to another repaint. It's number nine. Uh, the X Men underneath the Muscle Machines banner again, the same that one that we saw in yellow. Looks now we get it in red. One, well, kind yeah, of. I, I, actually, I kind of like this one better than the other one. Maybe the yellow just maybe didn't sit well with some of the graphics. I, I mean, the know. deco, the deco on the side, the yellow, the X kind of eh, but I mean, it does look better than the yellow one. Yeah, uh, yeah, it does look better. Uh, again, this one wasn't a real life truck or anything, so don't don't look too crazy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's the same design here. Again, this is kind of a just kind of, you know, we we mentioned a lot with the muscle machines too, where it's like we take we take the decals and just slap them on there, yeah, and you get you just hope for the best. And this is a great case of that. You're not going to get like mind blowing deco on here or like split paint jobs. Really, that's that's not really what muscle machines was about in so many ways. It's really this is what you get. And you got to keep going. Yeah, exactly. So that's the muscle machines there. As we move on to number ten. It is another Punisher under the Monster Patrol banner. This one is all black. Uh, yeah, you know, you kind of look at the roof on uh, the wing on this one, RJ. It does sit a lot better than that gray one we saw, doesn't it? Yeah, it definitely does. It sits more normal. Yeah, so I'm kind of wondering if our, if our gray Monster Patrol might have had a broken wing. So, yeah. Well, it may have or it was made with a different wing mold. I don't know. I don't know. Just don't tell anyone. Ours might be broken. But hey, you know, uh, this is the same again, same design as we saw with the gray one. But I like this one better. Uh, yeah, I think, I think it, everything pops better. You can see all the guns a little better now. Everything's all drawn, and I, I think it just repeats better onto the graphics. Yeah, I agree. The white pops and the black a lot better than the black and the silver. Uh, probably if you if you're gonna pick up a fantasy truck that, and you see you know the Punisher, which one are you gonna grab? Probably this one over the other one for sure. Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, but again, I mean, the, I don't know why you'd be picking up some of these unless you're like hardcore into the Marvel yeah. stuff. This is your year. Uh, another Bigfoot here. This is number eleven with Captain America. Uh, this one's gray. Uh, this is this one's harder a variation to kind of compare to when you look at the other one, which which was white. So. Uh, oh, interesting. Hmm. I just got a pretty neat picture here. Um, hmm. I'll see if I can get that on to the show later. But, uh, tonight? yeah, tonight. Uh, let's see. Yeah, well, here's uh, this gray Captain America. Yeah. It's, uh, again, the same one as we saw in white. I, and there's Bigfoot on the roof again. This is probably one where the first version was a lot better. I think the white maybe looks a little more appealing to what Captain America is all about. Uh, the gray, it's kind of not not a very strong gray. So yeah, it's very it's very dull. The the middle of the rims almost look clear if the light hits it just right. 
Uh, I've seen on certain uh, eBay listings of this truck, I have to zoom in and be like, what the heck is wrong with the rims? But they're very light on the gray. Uh, definitely like the first one a lot more than this one. But, you know, this is one they just, hey, we got the name. Let's put it out there. Yep, that's uh... – so weird how like we just tie all these trucks in and it's like this is kind of what you get so yeah. there's another captain america for you as we move on to another repaint uh this uh is daredevil from the carolina Ooh. culture wing instead of all red this guy's now all blue um i don't know much about daredevil but i don't think i'd associate the color blue with daredevil correct you're probably you're probably right uh did the deco change i don't remember what the other one was honestly but it does look a little different on the side but i could just be me forgetting things i don't know nah well let me check here now look he looks like the same guy you okay. know why he looks a little different although i will probably pick the red one over the blue one it i think the, red, the, the the deco kind of blends in a little too much yeah I so, if you on the one side, yeah, you're going to want this one. Um, but I don't know. What do you think, RJ? No, that's what I was. That's why I asked you if it was the same or not, because I really noticed him on the side there a lot better than the red one where he just kind of blended in very simply. But you can see him stands out a lot more on this one. Yeah. Uh, so, that's actually the halfway mark into this main 2005 line. Uh, Marvel's Heroes is a big core of what's going on here, but there are other licenses that do appear here in 2005. And, and the next one that gets a big slew of releases is ACDC, the very popular band. I think any monster truck nut probably knows a majority of their songs are being key intro songs for trucks and in the event. So uh, this, is a, this is a good fit, I think, for oh, yeah. this band to be involved. So uh let me backtrack here real quick um this one this one's the highway to hell version uh wow. these all have different names to the songs and stuff so uh as we scroll down here the one curious note i noticed this one is licensed through dodge so although we had the licensing issues with the previous ones before uh with all the marvel superheroes we do get the licensing here for uh the acdc trucks which is even more curious because we did not get the licensing uh on any of the other ones so here's the highway to hell version it is all blue you can see the whole band on the side there that's the same deco that's on the tailgate and on the hood and on the bed cover um there they are uh there's no markings on the truck that say highway to hell which yeah. um is kind of curious and will, you'll see a repeating pattern with some of these so uh, what do you think rj uh, no, I was going to mention, you had mentioned they have the licensing back. And while uh, I, I glanced over here at the uh, action truck, the Dale Jr. truck I have uh, sitting here, and I remembered, well, they got the licensing back for those. You know, they have the bow ties, the Chevy bow ties on the front of the Jeff Gordons and the Dale Juniors and the, the Fords on the front of Dale Jarrett and Elliot Sadler's M&M car. So they had to get the licensing back for certain things, and here it is right here with ACDC. Yeah, so I, I mean, I'm, I'm an ACDC fan, but I don't know if they had like some personal deal with like Dodge where, you know. Like, oh, yeah, 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 maybe, maybe. maybe. So maybe that's why I kind of like, hey, you got to get Dodge in here, and now we're all kind of. They might have been a movie. commercial at the time or two or three, who knows. Maybe. And now the branding here, this isn't like a Raminator or don't say Bigfoot on it. This is just an ACDC truck. So that's kind of yeah. a difference from all the other fantasy trucks that we get from, from the, like the monsters and stuff that are tied to some truck. Uh, ACDC is just ACDC. So. Yep. This is the Highwood Hell version. This is number 13. Oh, yeah, line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, there you go. Go ahead. Yeah, there you go. So uh, I don't want to get a copyright flag here. I, I don't know how that <laughs> works. So yeah. here's High Voltage, number 14. Uh, this this one's got a little more deco going on here. You got the old lightning bolt on the side there. Very fitting for what's going on. High Voltage. You see High Voltage on the door, too. Yeah. Uh, really you see, too. Yeah, so you do see the name on this one, like the Highway to Hell. You just kind of be like, oh, I don't know what it's all about. So this one's very detailed, more of, well, not very detailed, but more detailed than the last truck. Definitely. Look at all that deco you got on the hood and the, the, the uh, truck freak, the bed cover. Can't think there's a lot of detail uh, on this one. Well, not a lot again, but more than the last one. 
Yeah, and uh, again, yeah, it's the same deco that's on everywhere, but I think this one stands out a little more. Maybe yeah, because it's only one person. Yeah, and it's such a gigantic lightning bolt, too, where it's, yeah. it's such a focal point. Uh, the color of this truck, I don't know, it's kind of like a grayish cream almost. So. Yeah. Oh, those are album covers on the trucks. Thank you, Levi. Uh, you know, I, I, I kind of had a thought that's what that was, but that made we'll confirm it right there. Good job. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, I'm a little old and slow, so uh, there you go. I'm, I'm, I'm not old enough that's for you. Cooler. That's even a even better reason to get that or pick up these in the stores. Then absolutely. Here's number fifteen. It is uh, I've misread it. It says who made who. This is a very much a royal blue color here. Uh, one of the more simpler decos. May have, um, some, may have some flake in there, maybe. I can't tell. Maybe. It kind of does look like a flake. Uh, if you zoom in here, a little bit of flake color in the uh, the base color, it looks like. Yeah, in the base color. So, Sorry. yeah, I mean, you know, I'm not running out of things to talk about here, guys. I swear. Uh, it's just these ACDC trucks are just kind of. They're cool, but there's not much to them. Yeah, there's that's that's the core problem with a lot of well, again what muscle machines did. I know everybody kind of speaks for the realism, and especially this 2005 line. It's just they, it's just not a lot going on to. If you're one of those guys, you know. Okay, here's a good comparison with the muscle machines, uh, especially in 2005. Current time, Hot Wheels monster trucks is running, and they have their premium lines where it's like a set of SpongeBob trucks. Ninja Turtles, Mario, the auto part exclusives. Uh, that's kind of what I would compare a lot of what Muscle Machines did. It's like yeah, you want the real trucks, but there's this really cool set of like six trucks that, that are over here that you want to get anyway. So it's it's kind of like that with like the current Ninja Turtle trucks that are on shelves. There's five of them. It's like, man, these, yeah. these aren't real trucks, but they do look cool. So Yeah, yeah it's, it's one of those deals. It's like, hey, we're going to make it. Look cool, makes people grab it on the shelves, but not put too much into it. Get your money. There you go. There's your products. We gave you products. You know, it doesn't have to be that detailed. You got it, didn't you? So yeah, and you're the guy who buys it too. So yeah. uh, you know, it is what it is. There. Um, moving on, number sixteen is for those about to rock. We salute you, and this is very deep orange as. RJ is singing the music there. We got a nice yeah. camera side. We salute you. This may be my favorite of, of it so far. I like this yeah, different this color. Nice. Uh, this color is very much reminiscent of like what we saw with the Jurassic Park trucks in 2003. I know there was a couple with like the burnt orange color. Yeah. So this is a cool one on here. Uh, the Canyon's really the, the focal point with the logo. Very on nice. this, one. Cool. this is very cool. Again, it's it, – Again, they're saying a lot, but not saying much at all. They're getting your, they're getting you to purchase it because, hey, look at it. Their album covers, paint schemes. What more do you want? Like, very nice, very nice. Yeah, it's uh, you know, and they speak for itself. It's a cool one. Uh, just continuing off the line here. There's only two more in the ACDC subset. Number seventeen. It is flick of the switch. This one is a uh, baby blue scheme. Another one that we've seen a lot of with the Van Helsing's in on the Jurassic Park trucks. Uh, this one has white decals on it. Uh, you see flick of the switch on the side. Uh, this is hard to read uh, from our camera here. I'm curious if anyone has this in person, Is it, if it's also hard to read. Uh, maybe just because there's a lot of the bright colors here. I know uh, if you guys follow along, I'm a big fan of bright colors on these trucks, but not if the decals, you can't read them either. So uh, Yeah, that's very questionable. There's not a lot of outline of those white letters on the side of that, but – yeah, no, but but I guess if you know this one, if you from a far away, you see this baby blue truck sitting on the pegs, so you're gonna come over and check it out. Well, I'm just a little more curious if you continue reading what it says because it is hard to read. Uh, flick of the switch everywhere here. Uh, just kind of compared to maybe some of the other ACDC trucks, there's a lot of uh, darker, um, darker decals or darker paint. Excuse me, even the decals too are darker. So this one is just really much like a. a Bright on bright, you know, ACD scene. You got the character on the side, and then flick of the switch on the sides as well. Uh, the Ram, the Ram branding's on that same color scheme as well. So yeah. it's a tough one, uh, but it, I guess it works. If you're buying the set, you're gonna need it. Yep. 
Uh, and there is one more to the ACDC set. It is Fly on the Wall. Uh, I lie. This one might be my favorite. This is such a. This is a lot stronger of an orange color. Yeah. Uh, maybe than the maybe the burnt orange we just saw from We Salute You. So or uh, whatever I said before, <laughs> I'm losing track. But uh, yeah, this was another cool one too. You got a fly on the wall on the side. You got old fly on a wall. This is this is readable. Um, none like our previous one with flick of the switch. You couldn't really read what was going on here. You can yeah. see the fly. You can see the wall. You get the point <laughs> where it is fly on the wall. Yep. Not much more to say. I like this color a lot more than the other one, though. Yeah. No. Uh, it's uh, it's ACDC there. If anybody has any questions about ACDCs and stuff here in somebody's trucks, please leave them in the comments. We'll definitely get to a bunch of them here. And again, if you're joining us late, Monster J OCD was in here. He's uh. Cooking some dinner in the background, working on some other projects. So he'll yeah, jump in the, in the house. Yeah, he's in. He's in the house. In just the, house. the screen. So yeah. we're here. We're we're talking about muscle machines. We're we're rocking and rolling here, just like ACDC. Uh, as we move into the last segments of the 2005 line, Fantastic Four. Uh, I know they just had a movie around this time. So yeah. now we go six Captain Insano branded. Really. Uh, Fantastic Force. And we'll go ahead, RJ. Are you going to say what I'm going to say? No, I was just, I was saying really. Like, go ahead. And I was I was trying oh. to hype you up. Go ahead. Well, it's a brain blast because if you guys are paying attention at home, we never get a Captain Insano yep. uh, muscle machines truck at all. We get the Dragon Slayer. We get the muscle machines. We get the Spider Man. We don't get one Captain Insano proper. So, which that's such a that's a shame. That's definitely one that probably could have got in. And it's yeah. even more a slap knowing that this is branded. As Captain Insano, as we look at our first one, which is just the Fantastic Four uh, group here, uh, to get to get all everybody in the clan here doing their thing. You got old Stretch Armstrong. You got the got the Fireball. You got the girl and that guy. I is butchered all. Name, the is there naming on the roof? No, but the, that was partially on purpose, guys. Don't yell at me. I, they got names. Don't don't go crazy here. Um, yeah, I'll we'll go up to the roof here. There's Captain Insano right on the roof. How about that? So this is the only the only sniffs you get of Captain Insano on these toys. So it's mm -hmm. a shame, but I guess you got to eat it up while you get it here. And why not have six of them? So this is the main Fantastic Four one. All the characters are on the back here. Uh, this is an all red truck again under the Captain Insano branding. Uh, kind of curious here. It looks like kind of the deco stopped at the door line on the Hummer pseudo body here. So you kind of see mm -hmm. uh, the graphics. They look kind of cut off just by a smidge, just kind of working in the space. They weren't filling in, in between the lines back then. So yeah. And what's interesting is that they kind of change the carding here, but we always the numbers are all staying the same here. So it's not like these are all sub branded something ridiculous. So here is the Ben Grimm version or the thing. Uh, this one's cool. This one's like a purple truck here. I, I yeah, really does it got some pearlescent like or not pearlescent, but uh, some uh, flake in there? Yeah. No, I, I really like what's going on here. Yeah, with this the, truck. the simple graphics. Um, it's yep. not not a lot going on here. So, uh, but I I really just like this purple color. I really I, I don't think we see this color. Anywhere else? Oh, yeah, the lot that logo of pops a lot better on that. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't think we see a lot of um, this color anywhere on any yeah. anywhere else in the Muscle Machines line. So you get it here with Thing. I think it's a, a great choice. Yeah, uh, sure. definitely an early favorite in the Fantastic Four set. So yeah, definitely super cool. That is that version here. So we have. Uh, moving on to Reed Richards, who is – which guy is he? This, he's Mr. Fantastic, right? I believe yeah, so. I'm right. I'm right. It's okay. I, I know what's going on here, fellas. So uh, this is an all-white uh, Captain Sano Hummer. Uh, now, I did say kind of on that first one, it looked like they're trying to fit between the lines with the graphics. This one says Fantastic right across the side. They, they get everything they need here with Mr. Fantastic. So um, – yeah, uh, it's kind of a bummer knowing that like we see that that really cool purple here, and now we just kind of get like an all white one. It's kind of a yeah. bummer, but you can read everything here, and that's important. Yeah, that's true. That does 
does uh may, it does help make everything more you know visible to where like other trucks in the line you're like what does that even say uh like the daredevil truck uh you know not bad not bad not not great but not not you know terrible not not at the bottom of the line yeah no it it, it has it has what it has so yeah. there you go guys i'm sorry i'm not a comic book guy i this is why i do monster trucks so it's a uh, Bear with me here. Here's uh, Sue Storm or the Invisible Girl. Uh, so it breaks away from the Hummer here. Uh, what, this is what, is say? what is this about? Yeah, so uh, this is a uh, kind of a tealish color here on a just regular pickup truck, that same generic single cap truck we see in 2005. But it does have the Captain Insano branding on the roof. Uh, kind of hard to read what's going on here. Um, the Fantastics logo are all there. Uh, I'm curious why. Okay, so here we here we get our roof shot here. Uh, Captain Sano did run on like a pickup truck, so it's not like just a woman. I mean, just a girl one time. Come on now. Uh, they're just they're the same. Okay. Um, I, I don't know why all of a sudden we just don't decide to do a Hummer here. Yeah, it's very strange. I mean, it's cool in a way, but you're also like, wait, what? But I mean the. Uh, the Hummer tool is not perfect, so it's not like people were like, "We want the Hummer. We want every one of these a Hummer tool." You know, no one said that. So, technically free reign, but very strange. Man, all the comic people are coming after me. What can I say, guys? Uh, we're almost done. Don't worry, Johnny. He's the Human Torch. Okay, he also I got that one right. He's also not uh, on the Hummer body here. He's also, but he has Captain Saner branding. It's a dark red, a little darker than kind of the ones we see with Daredevil, but he's all dark red with uh, the Human Torch on the side here. Uh, again, there's that roof shot with the Captain Sano branding. Uh, it's, again, I don't know why they just decide not to use the Hummer body all of a sudden. They just said, heck, we only got two trucks left. Let's throw them in uh, as pickups. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's very yeah. weird, but there, weird. there's Human Torch. It's a cool one. Uh, yeah. Strange one off. You don't ever get again. Didn't didn't want it. Didn't ask for it. Got it. So there you go. Take it as you will. And here's our last one. It's another Fantastic Four generic one. Uh, not a Hummer one again. It's all black. It, this should be the same decals that we see on that Hummer one that was all red. Let me double check that real quick. Uh, I don't even know. See, I get so forgetful. Uh, no, they're different graphics. So these are a little oh. different here. But again. Now we switch to that pickup body, Captain Sano branding again. Just so curious why we get Captain Sano branding and on all of this. Yeah, very true. Captain and Sano. But this is an all black truck with the whole gang there, the whole damn family. And uh, yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, the, the guys, I told you, the 2005 Muscle Machines line is painful. There's just a lot of why did this happen? What um, well, the, did you did uh, I can't talk? Did you want to fill the peeps in on uh, what trucks were supposed to be made? Any real trucks that were supposed to be made that didn't get made? Yeah, didn't I can definitely do that real quick. We're not done yet here, the guys. Don't worry. Um, oh yeah, we do. We're not. Yeah, there is some other trucks. There's other stuff there. we're going to talk about here with the line. Uh, I am going to pull up some auxiliary pictures here. We do have a lot of them that are on like the Brian Pant website tonight. But there is mainly one key one I do want to talk about now that we did not get in the uh, 164s. Um, we did get in the other scales. Uh, I'm going to show the 172 version of this one. 172 was a big line for them. I know Spin Master has a 172 line now. Uh, but that was a really big deal for Muscle Machines. And they did a lot of cool ones. One in particular was the Executioner. Uh, the Executioner, obviously a, a longtime name in the Hall Brothers camp. Uh, we get it here in 172 scale. I know there's like a 143 out there as well. Maybe a, maybe a 124. I don't, I'm not good with the 124s in my brain there, but the 172 is probably the notable one. I did want to show that one off here. It's a very simple truck. There was a, a white and red, and there was also a white and black. Um, we don't get the black one. We only get the red one in all the different toys, but uh, we don't get it in 164, which is such a shame. Uh, we, it's 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 another easy one to do, especially when you got all that RAM licensing and everything. You just don't even just RAM mold. You don't even like 
you don't have to have a Ram licensing. It would be cool, but you have a Ram mold, use it, you know, but. Yeah, it's a shame. And, you know, one thing Dude mentioned about the 172 scale, we might do an episode on 172s down the line, so we're not going to spoil everything. But the Samson, they, uh, the Samsons that they made in here were a little different. So every tool in the 172s was just this pickup truck. There wasn't, like, goofy bodies. It was just these pickup ones. Uh, but the Sam, but Samsons were in them, and the, the fists were just painted on the side. So yeah, they were painted, painted right on the side. So I always thought that was kind of cool. Um We'll stop the stream there. Uh, we'll go back to the Brian Patton website because we're not done talking about muscle machines. We got uh, well, if anybody has any questions, I again, make sure you leave them in the comments that. as now we're pulling up the NASCAR ones. As yep. you see, RJ had Dale Earnhardt Jr. one in his hand. Uh, I think these did come around at around 2005. Actually, no, I will say 2005. Um, RJ, where were these sold? Uh, they were like I found mine at – Gosh, where did I get these? I'm sure like there were some bought at NASCAR races because they were action collectibles at that time. Like they'd put the action banner above the muscle machine banner, which was solidifying them as a NASCAR toy now or a collectible, I should say. Um, so I know I have some from the tracks, uh, but I know I had some from like Toys R Us, probably Kmart, who knows. Uh, right, I was kind of curious, you know, we'll see with the packaging. It's a very big drastic change um, from what the main muscle machines look like. So that's what I was kind of wondering if their distribution was only at tracks and through the teams and at the merch haulers. But, hey. Well, I mean, I know, I knew, I think Action had their own hauler back then with, like, all their stuff in it. So yeah. it was just so throwing them. Yeah. But if you're saying you caught them out there in Toys R Us, I'm going to believe you there. And I'm sure, I'm sure they probably did in some shape or form. And this is where a lot of the meat and potatoes are in this line. Yeah. So. I mean, I'm pretty sure, like, at uh, Toys R Us's, uh, I would find them hanging kind of close to the NASCAR diecasts. And you'd be like, oh, okay, what's this? So. Yeah, so uh, we did get a couple here. And this is what we're going we're gonna to dig into a lot of these in a bit. Uh, but here's the first one it is Dale Earnhardt uh, Sr. It has the GM Goodrich branding on it. Uh, as you see here with the packaging, it's a completely different packaging than what we get with the other Muscle Machines trucks. This is in a sealed plastic. Like You're going to need a pair of scissors to cut these guys out. That you this can't is, open this is also res reminiscent of their uh, 164 Platinum Series line. I think it was completely – well, I think back then there was little circles you could – pry out with like scissors and open it but i think in the like later years when they stopped doing those cars because they had like rubber tires and stuff uh they put it in packages like this completely sealed plastic so that's another action like thing they're bringing over and doing here with this line now that they own it yeah so uh here's dale senior's uh look here very reminiscent of the of the Intimidator in the, in his back and black scheme, always rock and rolling here. Uh, this has Chevy licensing on it, so it's kind of interesting. We don't get any Chevy licensing on anything in 2005, but we definitely get it here with NASCAR. Uh, there's a Chevy emblem right there on the grill. Uh, if you're a Dale Senior fan, you're going to need these, and I think these are a much better crossover than maybe ACDC or the Fantastic Four. This because I think if you're a NASCAR fan in general, you're going to buy this. You don't even know I have anything with monster trucks versus, yeah, I guess if you're an ACDC fan, you see on the shelves, maybe you, you pick a couple up. But, like, I feel like if you see these, you're a NASCAR fan, you, you, you just need them anyways, even if you know nothing about monster trucks. Yeah, definitely. If they had your driver on it, you're picking them up. No, no. <laughs> so there's Dale Earnhardt Seniors. Uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr., the number eight. This is Junior Motorsports branding. As you guys know, he was sponsored by no Budweiser. Yes, sir. No Budweiser on these toys. So nope. uh, these were ages three and up, which is kind of interesting. Uh, it's printed right there. So this is very much very much a generic scheme that you get for anything Dale Earnhardt Jr. back in the day that was not made for adults. It just says Dale Earnhardt Jr. everywhere on the truck. Uh, RJ has his truck in his hand, so I'm actually going to stop the stream here and let RJ talk a little bit about it because he has it in person. Uh, well, what are we what are we talking about about it? Tell me about it. You have it. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's just mainly his paint scheme from his paint scheme from back in oh four to five. They're kind of ran together. If it was a generic uh, paint scheme like this, you know, under a, not a in a, ugh, not an adult collectible, uh, didn't have certain uh, pictures 
on it. But I mean, other than that, it's a cool truck. It uh, they're very cool, no doubt. And I know a lot of uh, a lot of Dale Hart Jr.'s merch. They would do like two versions of it. They'll make an adult one that's on a base and says Budweiser on it or something. Uh, they never did that with the trucks here, and uh, I don't think there was ever plans to. So this is just the straight up Dale Earnhardt Jr. monster truck you get here. Uh, probably should have got some others, but hey, we'll talk about them. So uh, here, uh, here's another one. Here it's Tony Stewart, the Home Depot. This is when he was with Joe Gibbs Racing. Uh, he won the championship in 2005. So this is probably a home run truck for any NASCAR fan, especially if you're a fan of smoke. Uh, it, it just looks just like the car he ran for Joe Gibbs. It is on Chevrolet. has the Chevrolet branding. It is bright orange. It has Home Depot sponsorship. It says Tony Stewart on both sides of the window. RJ, what can you say? No, I mean, it's that's what I was going to say about the Dale Jr. one. They're pretty much just their main line diecast uh, race cars templates on pickup trucks. That's pretty much what they were going for here. Yeah, no, it's, it's they got that. It's, it's like a generic kind of mindset tool, but they're, they're making yeah. it, they're slapping it, and uh, they're, they're picking a lot of the popular people here. So they're not going to get like a bunch of wacky ones here. As we move on to yeah. the next one, it is just is Jeff Gordon and Dupont colors. There you go, uh, spot on. Yeah, so you get Dupont here, number twenty four, right at the side. The, the flames, Dupont branding, Chevrolet bow tie, automotive finishes on the back. That's a nice touch. Uh, curiously, this one does not have a bed cover. Uh, I don't know if that is ours specifically, but there's no bed cover on this one. The other ones did have a Chevy bed cover on them, but maybe maybe just this one. Honestly, don't know, but it may just be this one because I know they all had their specific make on the bed covers. So I'm not sure on the Jeff Gordon one though because I didn't like Jeff Gordon back in these days. Was a Dell Junior fan, so I didn't have one to tell you if it came with a bed cover or not. But probably maybe just a error here, but maybe not. Could be wrong. I do want to mention a comment here from uh, Chris Bialik. Uh, he says he has a Tony Stewart number 14 monster truck from uh, a couple years later. I forgot what company made it. It was a muscle machine. That's correct. Action made those. Yep. And actually on my desk, I do have a Jeff Gordon one that I did buy at the track. Um, I got a Dale no Jr. one on my TV, so there you go. Uh, yeah, I definitely like to do a line or uh, episode on these. I definitely love pictures of these. So if you guys co – if somebody collected these – uh, there was quite a few. I'd probably say a dozen or so. I think there was uh, like Carl Edwards, Jimmy, both of Stewart's, both Jimmy's paint schemes, both Dales, Mark Martin, Danica Edwards, uh, Digger had one or two. Yeah, Digger had one too. Uh, the Carl Edwards one's the real winner because they had a commercial at the time yep. where mm -hmm. they had this uh, body on the truck. That's where uh, that idea came from, wasn't it? Pretty much. Yeah, and also, fun it. fact um, the Carl Edwards drove wild hair. Like once, so maybe twice. I'd really like more information on that. But uh, mm. yeah, anywho. Um, interesting. That's interesting. I didn't know. Well, I feel like I knew that stat, but maybe it didn't interesting. Hmm. Yeah, but no, if anyone has the line of action trucks, uh, please Ooh. let us know. I really would love pictures of these to put on the patent website. If not, we'll definitely do an episode on these in the future because these are really cool. Uh, they, they, they kind of – Bootleg Hot Wheels, just a smidge, but these are pretty cool. We'll talk about these in the future. So good call, Chris. I uh, figured that was a good time to mention now because we did have the Jeff Gordon on the screen. So, uh, yeah, Tony Stewart drove Bigfoot once too. And that actually counts because it was a celebrity racing bracket. So it and then up. Dale Jr. drove Rodney Tweedy's uh, DMP truck. And then I think Kevin Harvick may yep. have been thought too. Yeah, there, there's a lot going on there. So mm – -hmm. Uh, here's Elliot Sadler. He's got M and M's on board yep. with him. There's the M and M's uh, primary paint for uh, Elliot back then on the NASCAR circuit. Just brought to a monster. There is this is also licensed through Ford. Uh, mm -hmm. Curious how we do not get Ford helping out Bigfoot and the Captain Americas in ACDC. That's what I was. Yeah, it's very interesting to see it come back for this. Which I mean, I think that maybe have something to do with the action buyout they have. The license to these uh, car makers or engine makers, so they can do it. You know, they already make NASCAR diecast. Maybe they can do it, and the most the muscle machine side of things could maybe don't know. Yeah, it's a real spoopal with looking at these trucks, and uh, M&M's is such a popular sponsor for NASCAR, and um, 
you know, for any kid, I think Eminem's really identifies with anyone that's monster. Hello, anymore. I am back. Screen here. Hi, yeah. buddy. Hello, you guys made it pretty far Eminem. so far, huh? Yeah. Good. Talk about Eminem's. Eminem's wonderful. I love Eminem's. No, we all. Uh, so now, what's curious about uh, studio? Studio. What's curious about this Elliot Sadler one? There is a second version. Uh, and if you we'll pull it up on the screen yeah, now, blue scheme. Yes, sir. Uh, so, uh, I'll tell you the story on this. There's a collector who seems Greg Kenny. Um, Greg had this in his collection, I've never seen it in his life. And when Brian Patton was still collecting, he got a hold of the truck uh, mm. through a deal. It's got a little banged up, so it definitely got a little bit of a carpet league action on it. <laughs> uh, um, I've never seen this version ever, except for this. And I, if somebody has this in a package, well, we really need to talk with you because yeah, yeah. Studio. Um, definitely need to get pictures of this because yeah, this is very interesting to me. Definitely, it's his Daytona July paint scheme, I believe, from that year. Maybe he ran it more than that. I know they always have a patriotic theme paint scheme a lot of sponsors do that and it's literally that on a truck so very interesting like where did this come from where was it sold at was it something so yeah so there's a theory and i'll talk about it uh at the end uh you know we're done talking about the nascar stuff um because i uh again if you have this version in a package we need to talk with you because this could this could be some uh, hokey pokey. There there could be some baklava with this truck. So uh, we'll go back to that as we do kind of finish up the primary NASCAR yeah, truck. Yeah, we, we we do that. Six, it's Dale Jarrett. Yes, uh, sir, team. drive the yeah. truck. Yeah, we want to drive the truck, but unfortunately, <laughs> UPS wanted nothing to do with this truck. Their branding is not. Yeah, it's like nope, no sir. Jarrett down the side instead of UPS. That's funny looking. That's kind of like the, the – I guess that's what the Dale Jr. Budweiser paint schemes look like to non-Dale Jr. fans. are like, wow, look at how stupid that his name looks on there. I guess that's what this looks like to them. This is very strange looking. Yeah, so it's very curious why we do not get uh, UPS signing on board here with this. It's a shame, but yeah. um, we just don't get it here with the 164. So um, – very it's, strange. I mean, it does hurt from the paint scheme, yeah. but it hurts from the paint scheme. They should just left the the bedside brown and not put his name there. But you know, whatever. But we got another truck here, and now curiously, this is the end of the NASCAR line. But there's there's so much more to this story in NASCAR land that it's it lives a whole another life. Now I will talk about some of those in a second. We do have a couple more pictured on here on the Brian C. Pat website that they we do need to talk about. Um, I saw someone in the comments did mention, did they make a Bobby Labonte? Because we do have Tony Stewart. Well, we have a 124 Bobby Labonte truck with the full interstate batteries branding. Uh, there are also a couple prototypes, I think, have flown around on this. I'll try to pull them up in a bit. But uh, we do get a 124 that's confirmed. It's in a package. Uh, ours is loose. Studio. Um, but we get it here. Uh, we don't think we get a 164, so that's curious to mention. Uh, but there are a couple 164s floating around that look at Star Wars. Is that a 42 right there next to the Kevin Harvick? Oh no, it's oh fine. What is this? So, okay, so here's our first of the prototypes. Um, this is for promoting the Revenge of the Sith, which was like the last Star Wars movie that was out before all the new Disney stuff. This was in 2000. This could be 2005. They run hardcore in the branding. Like uh, Jeff Gordon ran a Yoda car and all that stuff. Remember that? Yeah. Uh, so we got a uh, Star Wars truck prototype. Um, I think there's a few of these floating around. Uh, Darth Vader is all present on here. Uh, you see, actually, see the date the movie's coming out. It says May 19, 2005, on the roof. Uh, here's a better roof shot. Uh, a little bit of glare, but uh, this is one of those many ones where there's a lot of prototypes floating around, but we don't see this mass produced. Very um, interesting. It's it's yeah. It's it's almost like a 
like a promotional die cast they have in NASCAR where like a business has a set amount of die cast. It's kind of like that. I mean, if it's a prototype, it's a prototype. Yeah, and it's kind of weird. And um, I know a lot of the, the messaging's coming on from uh, uh, talking about these prototypes because another one uh, is very much a prominent one. It's a Kid Rock 29 truck. Uh, there's been a lot of these that have popped up on eBay and different sell sites over the years. But this one was never made in package either. And this is a shame because this is one of the real life truck that this is an ran. MOD, this is an MOD uh, all star, I guess you could say. Yeah, this this was everywhere. Better Clark ran one on his truck as well. Yeah. Uh, so out of all the trucks that you think you would probably need to prioritize getting out, it's this one. And this one I know it's kind of gets shoehorned in with the NASCAR trucks, but this one probably should we probably should have got this in two thousand and four, realistically. Yeah. Realistically, as a tour accurate truck, probably honestly a year sooner is when it should have came out. Yeah, it's it's very weird. Um, it, it, it's a shame to see this is a, this is really accurate to what's going on with that real truck. Uh, has different uh, Kid Rock placements on here, so you got Kid Rock on the side and Kid Rock on the door here. So kind of we talk about the decals stay the same from each to each. Uh, not here, Kid Rock. So. Uh, this was such an interesting partnership, even to begin with, having Kid Rock and Kevin Harvick's numbers on the yeah. side. KHI. Yeah. So uh, we we don't get this made into a toy. Mass producers is a shame. And same with the next one here. Uh, I'll skip ahead. It's uh, Tony Stewart's smoke truck. Uh, this was another one that ran in real life, and this one yeah. ran on a, had a couple different bodies for different teams too. But we don't get this in a toy, which is which is a travesty. Yeah, the fact that we don't like there's ah man, another really good truck that definitely should have made it that didn't make it for whatever reason is very just ah, hate to see it. Yeah, uh yeah, and for I don't know what the reasons are um why we didn't get some of these and I'll skip ahead. We'll go to we, also got, we also got the DMP truck right here. I've got got that in my hand, the one twenty four version of oh, this one's a very interesting one. Yeah, we'll talk about that again now. So here's another one that maybe a lot of people didn't know. There was a regular Kevin Harvick truck out there too. Mm -hmm. Might as well since you had Kevin Har Har Harvick involved with the Kid Rock truck, and you have the Good Wrench on the Dale Senior truck. Why not do a Kevin Harvick one? He was running Good Wrench colors back then. I like yep. this one because it was the uh, 20 year anniversary of Richard Childress uh, yep. racing. So yeah, very interesting one for them to make on a monster truck of all things, like. You'd expect little like trailer sets with this on a pickup with a race car die cast or something, not a monster truck. Very interesting. Video. Uh, video. So we're working on uh, looking at this here. Looking at what? Uh, so there's a couple of 124s here too. There's another Dale Jr. 124. Yep. Here's another Kid Rock prototype on a 124. I mean, they got some big plans for old Kid Rock 20, uh, 20, uh, 29. But we yeah. don't get it. Um, so, so here's some theory talk. Uh, mm, please, I've, had, no I've had talk, discussions with this. Uh, a friend of mine, I'll name drop him. His name is Al O'Banion. He lives out here in Arizona. Uh, Al's a mega collector in the community. Uh, he wasn't always in the monster truck, so he was into a lot of the uh, Hot Wheels and some of the other like uh, designer cars back in the day. And he would frequent the action headquarters slash corporate store out in Arizona. It was in Chandler, Arizona. Um, when they were shutting that place down, they mm -hmm. had all sorts of stuff. Oh, yeah, man. Uh, everything must go. They were trying not to ship everything back out to Charlotte with them. Yeah. So um, we get uh, – Al goes in there, and I remember he was talking with some guy that he, he contacted from Action Collectibles – he says, "Hey, I have this box of like monster trucks. They're all like prototypes. I'm selling them for like a buck a piece." Dang. He didn't buy any of them. Oh, uh, he was not into the line. Damn. So at the time, so he's like, "What do I need to use these?" He kicks himself in the butt almost every day about those. And I remember see him. He always talks about, "Man, I, I wish I could have a time machine and go back and buy that box of prototypes." Mm -hmm. There was mm -hmm. stuff in there nobody ever saw, and I know oh, we're gonna yeah. talk about a lot of them. Uh, which is why I go back to that Elliot Sadler Fourth of July truck. Because uh, the collector who had this was Greg Kenny. Greg Kenny lives in Arizona. Oh. Hmm. Um, 
It makes me kind of wonder if Greg was one of those people that went in there on closing day and bought a prototype for a dollar. Maybe. So if you have this in package, prove us wrong. Because there's a lot of weird prototypes. They're mainly NASCAR ones. Studio. A lot of weird NASCAR ones that are... Well, I mean, um, because think about how many paint schemes there are a season, you know, especially now. But back then, back then different paint that. schemes different paint schemes uh, were becoming more prominent. So they were making different paint schemes and monster trucks, it looks like, or attempted. Yeah, it's weird. Um, you know... Yeah, There's definitely. weird prototypes that are flowing around here with this line, and I'm going to pull up a couple of them now. Uh, if anybody has any questions about the Muscle Machines line, again, we're, not, we're still talking about Muscle Machines. We'll have some of the extracurriculars we'll pull up in a second. Uh, Ryan, if you have any comments mm -hmm. about Muscle Machines here, uh, I know we kind of spread through 2005 on you, but... That's all right. I'm trying to figure out this comment section thing. <laughs> okay. No, no comments. Just listen to you guys. So yeah, as as was mentioned, there is a whole bunch of prototypes that coulda, shoulda, woulda with the muscle machines. Um, there was a magazine that Action put out. Yep. In monthly, I think. Well, they used to have monthly ones too. I know for members and stuff. Yes. Yeah, we gotta stop here. Um, God, I'm, I'm missing a picture. I, I I'll see if I can get that pulled up real quick. Uh, but in the meantime, let me pull up this picture. Uh, here's one of the prototypes that we do not get in 164 land. It is published in this magazine. I don't know what year or uh, what, what edition it is, but it is another Jeff. Good. Wrong tab, huh? Yeah. Hey, okay. Phil. Go for Phil. Just to give you a little uh, thing to be happy about, which you won't be. Uh, there's two new four packs for Hot Wheels Monster Trucks that we got to find. Mm, exclusive. So, I was waiting for, they're Ross at least, so that might be a little easier. That's but. even worse. I hate going. Oh, there. the I Jeff Gordon know. Foundation paint scheme, Christmas. The Jeff Gordon Foundation. He's got the Mighty Mouse. Anyone knows Gordon? They would always do a special 124. Yep. Um, Christmas scheme. Uh, yeah. Jeff Gordon Foundation Christmas scheme. Uh, Sam Bass paint scheme, I believe. Yeah. So, uh, but we don't get this. Uh, it does not appear. Obviously, yeah. it was made. There's the, probably a prototype out here, and some kid probably got it for a dollar, played with it in his carpet league, and wrecked the dang thing. Yeah, I tell you. It and completely, it's in a landfill somewhere in Arizona, just rotting away, I'm sure. Oh, it, it pains me. That's why I always check oh. flea markets. It's uh, so crazy. Uh, it's crazy to see that, too, with the Firestones on there, knowing good and well that – good year as the official tire in NASCAR this time. That's funny, too. Yeah, it's crazy here. Let me uh, let me hop on real, real quick. RJ, if you want to keep talking about some of these, I'll mute my mic real quick. Uh, we got that. Very interesting one. There's probably no telling how many one-off trucks or you know, not very many trucks that were made to certain paint schemes like this one right here. And I mean, you got Firestone Tires mm -hmm. On a NASCAR paint scheme. Very interesting, no doubt. No doubt about it. Yeah, sure. there's another NASCAR one. I'm going to try to pull I thought I had it saved. It was in the queue, but I think I accidentally deleted it. Uh, <laughs> coming on here. Uh, it's, another, it's another one that we never get to see. It's a Rusty Wallace truck. Um, I'm going to get it on my phone here real quick, see if I can get it to load. Um Let's see here. I'll stop the stream. Pull that back up. Uh, this was also in the same magazine as that Jeff Gordon one, which is why I wanted to showcase it. Um, let's see here. Share screen. Close tab. Here we go. Here's the Rusty Wallace one. It's, it's hard to see if you're on a computer here. Uh, but it's uh, of Rusty's last call. It says... Um, yep. hood, or no, 700 start, excuse me. But this is really around the time it was Rusty's last call. This is when he was uh, stopped driving here. But yep. um, no Miller Lite branding on here, but there was Dodge branding on here. So Dodge definitely had a piece of the pie. Uh, this is another one where just also a couple different pictures of this one. So that's very yeah. interesting. Look, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah, it's very yeah. weird. Um, but. Especially, yeah. like, uh, uh, well, I mean, 
Miller Lite paint scheme without Miller Lite isn't too uncommon, but very interesting. Gosh, those, those four – I just see the four packs now, Ryan. That makes me ill. Um, okay. so, posted. Are they up? They're in, they're in the Monster Truck Collecting group on Facebook if you want to nope, see the new Got to go check it out. I didn't get the notification alert, guys. So. Spoiler alert. They're nothing new. So no. I'm sorry. But, hey, what else is new? We have other prototypes that never came out. So another popular driver. All the ladies loved him. Casey Kane. Oh, yes. Yes, sir. Casey Kane has a couple prototypes out there that have – made appearances on the pitcher webs here's one of his regular dodge scheme that he had back in the day it's hard to see i know but it's it's real um, that's very cool i like that nice very cool uh, but he also had another one and yeah, red one. it is this one know. nice nice paint scheme ah uh, you, you know what this might not be 164 though this could be a different scale that's 124, it looks like. Or 143. So well, yeah. There's a lot of weird NASCAR stuff going on here. Nobody knows what's going on. Um, so, so there's a Mopar one floating around. Here's a Jeff Gordon 124 as Pepsi. Ooh, nice. Nice. Yeah, that's uh, very uh, – again, this, it turns out a Wild West with some of these. Mark, or Mark Martin? No, this one has been uh, Joe Nemechek. Joe, 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 is that Joe Nemechek or is that Nadu? No, it needs to be Joe. No, Nadu. No, Nadu went in the wall in 03. It's not him. Uh, this is still Joe Nemechek. I think the internet says Mark Martin, and they're wrong. Yeah, uh, it's Mark. Joe Nemechek. This is a 124 Army. Uh, this one for sure came out. This is a GI. Yeah, that one's Joe Nemechek. That one's definitely Joe. Yeah, this is... Yeah, this is definitely one that came out. This is this is the 143 scale. It's in the 143 box. GI Joe version of the Army paint scheme from Joe Nemechek. Um, it's pretty cool. But we never get a Joe in 164, at least that we know of. Uh, I found this on the research. I'm pretty sure this is a custom. This just does not yeah, look right. Like this is on Monster Patrol. I'm moving on. Uh, but this is a not. This is a... Uh, Bob of the Bonnie, this was supposed to be his, uh, for one of his truck series starts that he did at that time. Oh, that's cool. That's freaking cool, then. That's even better. That's even – you're you're giving them the idea of, like, okay, truck series star, let's make the truck exactly like that, but a monster truck. Very, very cool. Yeah, so when they ran on the 47, I don't remember who was the team owner then. Was it Morgan Dollar maybe? I don't know. Oh, um, man, the truck series. There's no telling back then who had those uh, numbers. Truck series. I'm looking to back up again because at this time that they had, uh, they were doing partnerships with uh, country music artists. And I can't see on the picture what country artist is featured on here. Um, it is, oh, it's uh, Trick, One Trick Pony, Trick Pony. I've never even heard of that group. I'm, I'm not a country music one fan. Trick Pony, yeah, I think that's what that is. All right, but I can tell on the side there's also a Conalodge <laughs> Roadaway Inn are also on this as well. So that's it, cool to see. Yeah, yeah, it's very interesting. Very cool. And with how rare uh, truck diecast became in that time frame, they were honestly not a thing. So that's very cool to see them put that on truck. I got money. Yes. Uh, what else we got showing off here? Uh, here's some other miscellaneous 143s. Yep. Somebody said there was a Kiss fan. Well, they had a 143 Kiss, uh, Kevin Harvick. Yep, to match. I think he Richmond win, maybe. I'm about match. to say Richmond. It was, you know, Chevy Rock and Roll was very much a big thing. So yep. you got a 143 of that one. You also got a 143. I don't know if this one came out. This is another one of the Star Wars tie ins. This is a Jeff Gordon. DuPont Star Wars version, so... Oh, um, they get paint scheme, I think, for Jeff. Yeah, uh, I don't know if that one came out, though, so... I don't know if that one did or not. I, I don't know. And uh, I, uh, one that did come out that I know a lot of people were mentioning uh, is the John Force 143. Mm -hmm. So they were doing all John Force stuff back then, too. Uh, he did get a 143. I, I'm pretty sure I've seen a 164 prototype of this John Force truck, but... Um, we don't get it. We get it in 143. Uh, it has casual GTX all over it. It's green. Yeah. It's, you know, John Force is the wild man. He's still, 
we still out there drag racing until 2020 with all the shenanigans, but I know we yeah, still out there. So. Yeah, so that John Force one, I know that's another popular one that people mention a lot in the comments and stuff. So that's there too. And then I think I have one more in Toyland that I did want to show off. Uh, that one did come out. It's a, I believe it's a 143. They had a deal with uh, Ed Beckley and Checkered Flag promotion or pr promotions. Checkered Flag promotions back in the day to sell a exclusive Checkered Flag promotions truck. Very much a precursor to like the World Finals trucks that we would see uh, many years later. This one was only exclusively sold at Checkered Flag events. Uh, and I believe on their website they might have had an interface and maybe some other like the monster styles back in the day. It was really cool. I bring this up because we found the Brian Patton website uh, because it is a weird outlier. It almost looks like a Bigfoot Mac tools. Uh, it's just, it was just really interesting. Like, you know, they make an agreement with a tour to go out and make this and they choose checkered flag and maybe not monsters of destruction. You know what I mean? Yeah. Very interesting to see that instead of MOD. No, no question. Uh, which there's a connection with that and your uh, guest on your other podcast, maybe Bill. Find out, find out soon. Uh, we didn't do that one yet. So. I wanted to bring up one more thing. Um, this one, oh, actually, Phil, if you want to finish off. Oh, great. Here oh, well, 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 I don't know. What, what do you got, Ryan? We're, we're just kind of okay. freestyling right now. Yeah, before we head into these, um, the famous Savage One Customs insists, I believe it's him that insists this, and I'm pretty sure it's him, uh, insists that there's a Grinch green, uh, green light, whoops, uh, muscle machines truck out there, and he had one apparently and no one can back that story up i've tried people got mad at me for even asking that there was something like that but he insists it could have been maybe a prototype who knows you know it's possible but he insists that he had a grinch muscle machines truck I, i'm almost certain it's tyler i might be speaking for the wrong person i'm pretty sure it's him because i remember when i posted that and people were like no it doesn't exist he was also on my side saying it does because he was the one who found it so i don't know if there is one I, I, who knows there's a bunch of prototypes of random things like that star wars stuff and all that other stuff so i wouldn't put it past uh this series that it could have been maybe something like that but he definitely insists that it existed he had one at some point he doesn't have it anymore clearly but um you know i just want to share that information so if anyone knows that um about that truck grinch some kind of grinch truck um you know that's that's something that we're trying to figure out the mystery origin of. But uh, I Tyler's pretty sharp with things, and I I would not put it past him to actually have had one at some point. So I don't know. Um, you know that wouldn't shock me either because I know Tyler lives in Arizona, lived forever. It's always yeah, Arizona yeah. base, so it wouldn't shock me. And I'd really like to get more detail. I know Tyler listens, so I'm sure I'll, I'll get <laughs> yes. a message on it, Tyler. Uh, you know, were you in the action store when they were closing, or did you frequent there? Because, you know, we you know we were just got done talking about how that action store, they were just selling prototypes like it was candy <laughs> for a dollar at the front desk. That's, so, that's a good uh, point. Yeah, Arizona-based, that that could be how he got that. And Yeah, that, I'm curious. That, that Grinch did exist. I, 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 I'm sure Tyler's going to message me with some information. So oh, he will. Keep you everyone will. posted on that one. So, uh, again, yeah, if you were in Arizona, a time the action store was open or were in there, even in Charlotte, too. I know it was mainly the Arizona one that a lot of the stories came out of. But mm -hmm. even the Charlotte, North Carolina one, too. If you were in any of the action retail stores and you saw some things that just don't look right, you probably weren't hallucinating. They probably yeah. did exist. So, uh, give us a shout. Because it's it, it's the muscle machines got to be the wild west once they got the NASCAR stuff involved. It got really weird. Uh, as now on our screen here, we're looking at the 124s. I'm not going to go over them all. Uh, if you want to see these in detail, go to the Brian Z Patton website. Uh, but there are a couple of key ones here. Like here's a uh, this one was sent in from Donald Price Jr. Uh, this is a Animal House that's all in yellow. If you guys actually our wing fell off of it, you can see it's in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, if you guys saw in our 2004 episode, there was an Animal House truck that came out. It was all blue in 164. Here's an all yellow one uh, in 124 only. Donald has his. Uh, some more Van Helsing's. And there's a couple of different 124s. And they also did scale kits back then. So if we look on the screen here. Uh, there's a Barefoot Carolina Crusher. Uh, Van Helsing under the Carolina Crusher brand. 
Animal House obsession in the green snake bites. So uh, they're all, yeah. There's also a couple other stuff here. What's in this other picture? Is something I need? Oh, how can I ever forget that? Um, good job, Cheech. That's where I'm going next. So uh, my good friend Dan Agosh just sent me a picture of the Dirty Mo Posse uh, Junior Motorsports truck. RJ, you said you have that. Uh, yeah, mine's a little broke though. Oh, can you show? Can you show the crowd? Mm. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty broke. We uh, broke the wheels off of it at some point in time in the childhood, but uh, it's still it's still all there minus the two back wheels. But hey, what are you gonna do? It survived some of the childhood. But uh, yeah, there it is. That was a rough carpet league, but uh, <laughs> yeah, that's another one that we don't get in one sixty four. That I'm pretty sure there probably is a one sixty four prototype floating around somewhere. I'm sure, yeah. But we get it in one forty three, and I do want to mention that because. Uh, that's a curiously one of the real trucks and wasn't really real, but it was real. Um, yeah, it was real for uh, in the backyard of Dale, or yeah, there it is right there, the Dale Jr.'s backyard. Yeah, and this, uh, you know, this truck never ran shows, it's all through the Paul Schaefer stuff. They did a, a TV segment, I think, with it as well. Uh, Junior got to run around with it out in his big with property Paul, and stuff, Paul Rod, I believe, Rodney Tweedy, yeah. Uh, but yeah, this number ran events, but it was a real truck. So if you do see the 143, I guess it kind of fits in the same vein, kind of like the Aflac truck we were talking about earlier with the uh, yeah. car body stuff from later on from Action. Uh, but yeah, I'm sure there's probably a 164 to this one floating around. We just don't oh, get here. Uh, yeah. I was also sent a picture from our good friend Jason Twite, uh, who's a master collector in his own right. I uh, was not aware of this. I think he did briefly mention this. Uh, an episode ago. Uh, if you caught our 2004 episode, we talk about uh, obviously there's a lot of different Bigfoots, and including a UK big, the UK Bigfoot. Um, there was a UK Bigfoot 124 prototype that I don't think a lot of people have seen, if at all. I'm going to pull it up on screen now. Jason sent it in right at the beginning of our show here. So thank you, Jason. Here it is on the the shelf here. I'm pretty sure this is a shelf that's in. That was in the old Bigfoot shop. Um, it was on somebody's desk. So uh, we never get this in 124, uh, but there's the prototype. It was on somebody's desk at Bigfoot 4x4 back in the day. Jason had a picture of it. So uh, I Very think cool. – pretty sure that, that is, unless Jason has it then. Uh, <laughs> you're a weasel. <laughs> uh, thing to grab, that's for sure. Yeah, there's a lot of mysterious prototypes in Muscle Machines Land. And so the problem is with tracking a lot of them is really the interest of the line went away where it was kind of almost like nobody really cared to kind of keep uh, chasing a lot of those prototypes. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, a majority of the prototypes we all talked about here tonight are all like NASCAR based. Mm -hmm. Makes you kind of wonder what was floating around prototype based based on real monster trucks. I mean, we, we see the executioner in some of the other toy lines. We have Captain Insane O'Branding on the Fantastic Four trucks. Mm -hmm. uh, we know they also had licenses for trucks like Wild Thing and like a little more crazy trucks. I know I saw a comment, how come they never did any SUV toolings or muscle car toolings? It wasn't really in their MO with muscle machines. They weren't out there to do like fantasy trucks or yeah. – okay, they were, but we were using their pre-existing tools. Yeah, they using the pickup truck <laughs> Yeah, it's not like Hot Wheels making a Piranha or Spin Master making a Sasquatch. They're not. They're not yeah. in that business. That wasn't what yeah. monster, that wasn't what Muscle Machines were doing. Uh, the snowman on the side of a pickup truck and spray. Yeah, did they, if you had, if you were going to get like a Yeti, it was going to be a Yeti on the side of a Ford. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, and I know uh, the, the SUV wise, there really wasn't a reason to make an SUV. Not really. I mean, if you want to like make a make a call for Big Dummy, I guess. Yeah. None of the teams and trucks kind of affiliated here. But on Big Dummy, you could have just put a camper top on it. I mean, you already make truck beds, so. Yeah. Um, and it's like you kind of – and like Boogie Van was another one that never got made. That was yeah, under the that's Paul Schaefer thing that they could have made. But that would have had – that Boogie Van wasn't in the wheelhouse. I mean, we, we were lucky that we got um, a oh, uh, Dragon Slayer. Dragon Slayer. Nightmare. Yeah. Um, you know, just trucks that were more like, wow, this is nice to see. This is something you might have seen at your local county fair, or state fair, or whatever. Yeah, we were lucky we got like Dragon Slayer. That's probably the most radical that they got. Uh, I didn't even know that those Spider Mans were Dragon Slayers 
until tonight. That's crazy. So, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I feel like that's kind of the vibe. Like everybody was all in at Muscle Machines. And then something happened in 2005 where we got this very interesting line. And then the NASCAR stuff came in. And then it just turned into like prototype Palooza. Uh, and everyone just lost track. And then that's it for Muscle Machines. We don't get them in 2006. The toy line changes hands, different names, different everything. They're closing shops. They're closing companies, consolidating. Uh, that's it really for Muscle Machines. They were the big contender for Hot Wheels in their era of dominance with the Monster Jam trucks. These were the only people that truly had some sort of shelf space right next to them in majority of the same, if not all of the same stores – making real trucks and concept trucks that identified with a lot of consumers and, but they were only around for three years, but yet everybody still, you know, loves and remembers the muscle machines. Uh, and, uh, it's not until we get spin master involved and then green light jumps in the horse where now we have a three headed monster in yeah. monster truck toys where it's spin master, hot wheels and green light that are just knocking the barriers down. Uh, this was the only. This was really the only people that came anywhere close to what Hot Wheels was doing, and it's it's kind of a what if. What if Muscle Machines was around now? They could uh make it a fatal four way match, and uh, yeah, it'd be, crazy. it'd be crazy to think about if action keeps them uh, along. But uh, yeah, I mean, it was just it was that original competition for Mattel. It was like, oh wait, what is this? They kind of got a little suspension to them. It didn't last long, but they got a little suspension to them. You know, they, they didn't last long at all, no. No, no, they definitely did not. <laughs> because I broke tires all the time in the carpet leaves of those. But anyway. No, and then I would suspect that, like, a lot of the people that used to really die hard to collect muscle machines are the same people today that are really big on the green light trucks. Yes. Uh, I, I think it's really that, that kind of core collector where it was um, – Looking for an alternative, but a, but a different kind of truck. The, the the muscle machine trucks were display piece or the collectible. Yeah, they were more so a collectible than a toy. Yes, they were they they're compatible for toys. They had age limits on them, but yeah. they had working suspension and they had a more detailed chassis. And there's a lot more detail where. It, it, the toy was not a primary focus, and if you look at the current green light trucks, and I'll, I'll pull my AMPM rocket that I keep on my on my uh, desk. It, it this isn't you, you're not going to play with this at Carpet League. This will snap immediately. Yeah. This is this is a collectible that sits on a desk or in package, and you appreciate it. I feel like Muscle Machines is really in that same vein, but they wanted to have their cake too, and still cater it to the kids. Now, okay. You can argue, and obviously everyone does. Spin masters are collected collected by to by adults, and Hot Wheels are collected by adults. But those are kids' toys first. I don't care what anyone tells you; they're kids' toys first, and then adult collectors buy them. Green lights are rever are, are are strictly for adults. Yeah, muscle machines, I think, are for adults, but. The kids can use them too. They're yeah, pretty much the reverse of Spin Master and Hot Wheels today. Yeah, I agree with that statement. They were the that's a that's a good way of putting it. I like that. That was pretty solid. I agree with that. Yeah, and then that's the legacy of muscle machines. And now, again, this was <laughs> it's only a couple of years ago when it was just one toy line that was really at the head of the table. And now there's you know other big players in there. Yeah. There was always just like, what if? What if there was somebody else that could just kind of disrupt a little bit and provide a solid alternative? And as this podcast continues, we'll talk about maybe some of the other alternatives that do pop up and try to mix it up. Now, they, they don't have the shelf space or distribution channels like Muscle Machines did. It's not until we get Spin Master and Greenlight where there's monster trucks everywhere in every store all over the world. Uh, Muscle Machines was the first ones to kind of knock on the door at that time, and for three years, got to tip their hat. Yep. Uh, so that wraps up the Muscle Machines here. I know it's kind of a detour from what we were doing with uh, talk about Hot Wheels every week, but it's important when we're trying to build this timeline that we do mention Muscle Machines now and uh, include them and know why some of this happened. 
Uh, even though a lot of it's a lot, maybe some of this kind of leads more questions than answers. But uh, I want to know the truth. Yeah, it's important. It's important to discuss them. It's also important to raise awareness. And who knows? Anyone that's listening to this maybe realizing, oh wow, that monster patrol is pretty cool. I need <laughs> one of those. Uh, I need a barefoot because even still today, with time we're recording this in 2020, that's still probably that probably still is the best monster patrol, the best yeah. barefoot, a lot of the best bigfoots that we get in toy form. So. Yeah. I'd agree. Uh, if anyone has any questions again on the um, uh, Muscle Machines line, this is probably the last time I'm going to be talking about them right now uh, uh, as we continue on here with the podcast. I believe next week we're going to try to do something different here, Ryan. Yes, yeah. Brian Patton. Um, I have to remind him, but he should be joining us for uh, the collaboration here and have him on as a special guest so rj will be stepping aside for one episode and hopefully we'll have you back uh for hot wheels 2006 if you're willing to um but we'll have the man himself brian Patton, um the man who created the website and the archive that we have and uh it's gonna be awesome to speak with him if he can make it i'm pretty sure he will uh, i just gotta remind him again to be around but uh, it's going to be great. I think that he can offer so much knowledge into the world collecting in all different ways because he collected everything that you see besides the more modern stuff, uh, really modern stuff. So he has experience far beyond myself. I'm sure far beyond Phil's collecting abilities too. He's been in it for a long time. Well, was in it for a long time. And the stories he can tell can go on for hours. So I'm very certain that he's going to give us a lot of great content, a lot of great stories, um, people can finally actually see what he looks like. I know people were very curious to see what Brian looks like if you have never seen him. Uh, so he'll be here hopefully uh, next week, next Monday. And um, Phil next also has a little special podcast thing that he wants to do. Maybe. Well, we may yet. Yeah, we'll do it. Uh, mm -hmm. We're going to do a special episode. I ain't going to tell you when it's going to be airing. I ain't going to tell you what it's about. But yeah. uh, if, if you follow yeah, enough along, we'll 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 on. So we'll, we'll try to figure that out, and uh, we're not even going to tell you. It's just going to come up. So. No, that's why I kept a, a very ambiguous statement, but he has something special planned uh, for a little fireside chat that you can play next to your Christmas tree or whatever you celebrate. Oh, yeah. So Phil's uh, really excited for that. But the big thing, I think, is the Brian Hatton episode 10. Um, that's yeah. going to be really cool. Yeah, to we're trying to get Brian nailed in here. I know he's a very busy man, and, you know, yeah. Uh, talk about it next week the next week will really be a good uh, time too if anyone has like any general questions or anything and when i mean general questions no we're not telling you overboards coming out in 2021 that's not I, i'm gonna i'm gonna ban you no i'm not gonna ban you but i'm just gonna i'm just gonna ignore your comment and act like you don't exist okay we're uh, we're gonna talk about collecting and hobby a lot of the questions we answer here tonight that's the kind of questions we like to see Especially in episode next week, we have Brian Patton. So if I see a question next week that's like, a uh, question for Brian Patton. Uh, can they make uh, Exterminator in uh, 124? No, I, no, no. We're, 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 no, that's not happening. Sorry, fellas. But hey, that'll be cool on next week. Um, a lot of cool things to come here. You know, we're going to talk about all sorts of toys. I, we've got a great support here. Uh, this is something completely different. So, uh, yeah, exactly. And um, I also mentioned this is pre preliminary. I haven't asked him yet, but I had a viewer of ours ask if we can have uh, Neil Vandenberg on the podcast, who is the designer or was the designer for most of all Monster Jam trucks that you've seen up to this point in time. And uh, he liked the comments. So I, and Neil's a great guy. He's really nice. And I'm sure he'd love to be on if he, he watched. I don't know if he does or not, but um, it would be an honor to have Neil on at some point. Maybe we'll aim for the next 10th episode. So the 20th episode or whatever, um, or episode 15 or something, but I have to work that out. Uh, we're also like, we've spoke in the first episode. We want to try to get uh, other people on like employees from Spin Master and the design team. Uh, I have not worked the details through with those guys yet, but um I think Neil would be a great start for employees wise. And he's of course monster jam and the Feld side of things and the whole era from going from um, clear channel and um, the other um, pace motorsports to Feld and monster jam, that stuff, that whole era he was there for and designed in. So he has, I'm sure stories beyond uh, our wildest, imag a wildest imaginations. He also posts, if you guys want to follow him on Instagram, I'll actually tag his Instagram. He's a great guy. Um, he posts some artwork that you guys usually won't be able to see uh, anywhere else uh, Vandenberg. So um, if you want to check out his Instagram, that should work. That link that I just put in the chat, um, he posted today the uh, zombie invasion, some of them in HD quality. So if you never saw what the artwork looks like, 
um, he actually posted today, and it was really fun to see um, how that turned out. So Neil, uh, that's the wrong link. Whoops, uh, I'll correct that one. Um, so Neil is great, and I hope that he'll accept an invitation. Oh, and Neil Vandenberg art is the actual one. Here we go. There's the actual one. So um, I think he could offer so much insight and so much, um, you know, assistance in terms of like asking questions about what happened with designs. And uh, for instance, I think like, uh, for instance, like the zombie invasion trucks or the the zombie encore trucks, you know, what was your thought process and that stuff? So that's just like a a drop in the bucket of things that he designed so he can offer so much. We might even have to do like two episodes with him because there's just yeah. so much to, I want to ask him personally myself. So I know the viewers would love to do that as well. So that's an idea. Uh, we'll be working on it. And we also want to do some other special guests um, and see where no, that goes. So. Twight. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Jason Twight will be on here one day. Okay, cool. I, I'm not. I'm not against anyone joining in. I. I think having more people in the conversation is the better. So, uh, but definitely we'll have Brian on. Hopefully, I should say hopefully, but almost definitely have Brian on next week. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. And uh, RJ will be returning at some point as long as you're not busy for uh, 2006 for Hot Wheels. And um, that's that. So, um, Phil, I think we're good here. RJ. Yeah, I'm not really seeing yeah. any much comments there. Again, if you yeah. guys jumping in here if you want to learn more about muscle machines you didn't catch some of the other episodes we talked about 2003 we talked about 2004 they're in the video archives here so yep. make sure you catch up on those there's a little more interesting uh a lot more real trucks in there a lot yeah. more uh, more healthier discussions so make sure you, if you didn't catch those already go back and watch those and uh just long live the muscle machines yeah no doubt a very, well, very iconic series just for giving us a alternative to Mattel and Jam at the time. Yeah. And eventually one day we'll reach the era of Spin Master and OC, or OC. I just saw OC in the chat, sorry. Spin Master and Hot Wheels Moss Trucks, and that's far in the future. But we're getting, we're chipping away really quickly at these things. So we also want to cover green lights, by the way. People ask if we are. We're definitely going to cover those at some point. But, we're going to uh, cover anything that has wheels. Uh, if we're going to yeah, try yeah. at yeah. some point. <laughs> it's some All right. Well, we want to thank everyone for watching this far into the podcast. And if you're listening to us in the future, thank you for listening in right now as you're hearing this. And um, we'll see you guys next week with our special guest. And until then, have a great week as we head into the last, well, this is the last week before Christmas week. So uh, thanks again for watching. We'll see you guys in the next episode. This is Ryan, Phil, and RJ signing out.